Hello and welcome to the Oracle's Classroom. Today we're going to be starting a brand new series called 5-Minute Facts and Figures. In this first installment, we're going to be taking a look at Robert Half International and delving into what its business model is and some of the key attributes of the business. Let's dive in. So what does Robert Half do? Very simply, the company provides temporary and permanent staffing. And this is primarily in finance and accounting related positions. The company has brand names such as Account Temps, Robert Half Finance and Accounting, Office Team, uh, and even some legal type consulting. Interestingly, uh, the company used to franchise its staffing and in 1986, it began shifting strategy to reacquire these franchisees and bring everything in-house for better service. Uh, another interesting tidbit, after the Enron scandal in the early 2000s, Robert Half acquired uh, or hired the uh, 700 professionals of Enron's accounting firm, Arthur Anderson. And that formed the basis of what is now called Protivity which is uh, a business consulting and internal audit services. Robert Half was formed in 1948, and the company is based in Menlo Park, California. It has 326 offices across 42 states. Who runs Robert Half International? As this slide indicates, the management team at Robert Half is quite long tenured. And in November 2019, the chairman and CEO gave up the CEO title. And that caused a chain of promotions that brought up some longtime Robert Half employees. So now we'll take a quick look at the income statement of Robert Half. And in 2019, the company generated revenues of 6.1 billion. And what I have here is an overview from Morningstar that shows the income statement common sized. And uh, not surprisingly, Robert Half's business model of staffing is primarily people. So its gross margin is pretty consistently around that 41% mark. And those cost of goods sold are the employees that it is essentially renting out to other companies. It's overhead, it's SGNA. It does have some buildings and some leases, but uh, in, in general, it's overhead are also people who try to line up and place these individuals into companies. So its operating margin of about 10% is also pretty consistent over the last few years. So now we'll take a look at Robert Half's balance sheet. Here is a common sized statement of the balance sheet, but it might be more interesting to look at actual figures for this exercise. And as we can see here, uh, two ways to approach how much capital this business has. One is the top section, just using equity uh, debt, in which case they have none, uh, and subtracting out goodwill uh, to arrive at tangible capital of 933 million. Or we can take a specific asset approach and come up with 748 million with the primary difference being in the second case, I've adjusted for excess cash. So uh, the same adjustment could be made at the top. And uh, in either case, we can see uh, Robert Half has uh, quite a modest amount of capital compared to the revenues it generates, and uh, which makes sense uh, because it's just a staffing firm that relies on human knowledge workers, and uh, that is not a capital intensive industry. And lastly, we will sum up with an overview of Robert Half. We can see the revenues, margins, tangible capital that the company employs, 
it generates a return on invested capital after tax of uh, in the mid 30s. But the market appraisal of the business is such that it is selling at over six times the level of equity in the actual underlying business. So that is a quick overview of Robert Half. I will link to some of the financial statements in the video below and uh, ho hope you enjoyed watching. Please be sure to subscribe, check out the oraclesclassroom.com and uh, please leave feedback uh, if you have any suggestions on how to improve the videos, other companies that you would like to see. Please let me know. Uh, and as always, stay rational. Thanks for listening.